Welcome to the liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Tuesday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time Year 2. Today's first reading is part of Paul's admonition to the Corinthian church, which had a lot of divisions. It is strange how we Christians continue to fight ourselves today even though we all profess faith in Christ Jesus. In reality, we are more united than we know it. Even the so-called dead are not far away from us. How? Stay tuned to find out more in today's Bible study. Let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 to 14 and verses 27 to 31. Responsorial Psalm comes from Psalm 100, and our Gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. First reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of the one Spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, then healers, helpers, administrators, speakers in various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and is caught with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal is merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus went to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, 
Behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the bear, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report concerning him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. A young man had died. He was the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. When Jesus saw her, Jesus did not demand any expression of faith from her. The look on her face was enough to move Jesus to bring her son back to life. What is striking about this encounter is that Jesus spoke to the dead man as one would speak to someone fully awake. Jesus did not raise his voice as he did in the case of Lazarus. Jesus did not drive away those who were mourning and wailing, those who lacked faith, as he did in the case of Jairus' daughter. Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, arise. Jesus restored the woman's son because he knew how miserable life would be for her. She was a widow, and this was her only son. What Jesus did for this woman, he would later do for his mother, Mary, on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. By the way, how was the dead man able to hear and understand Jesus' command? Could it be that the dead can hear us? Surely, there is more to reality than what meets the eye. The dead man heard Jesus because the dead, like the rest of us alive, are connected to and indeed part of the one body of Christ. As St. Paul would say, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27 since we are all part of the one body of Christ, let us refrain from fighting ourselves. Let us refrain from fighting ourselves. If death is not strong enough to prevent a person from hearing Christ, why are there divisions and quarrels amongst us? What unites us is more than what pulls us apart. We are one body, living and dead. Secondly, as members of one body, let us avoid envying one another. The human body has different parts. So is the body of Christ. All these parts have specialized functions and they work together to keep us alive. We are not all apostles, prophets, teachers, musicians, and so on. We are not equally gifted. Some can work miracles. Others can speak in tongues. And some others can interpret these tongues. Instead of fighting each other, let us learn to use our individual gifts for the benefits of all. It is a shame that fellow Christians fight and even take their cases to the court before unbelievers to judge. Can the eye fight the nose? If 
even if such happens, who is the real loser? Avoid people who take joy in seeing brothers fight. Such persons are instruments in the hands of the devil. If you must take sides, be on the side of peace. Be on the side of God. St. Paul's words were addressed to a church torn apart by divisions. Some were on the side of Apollos and others on the side of Paul. Recently, I saw various write-ups and posts on social media showing heated exchanges between men of God regarding a certain Catholic brother who, because of his gifts, has now opened his own adoration ground, attracting huge crowds. Are there lessons we can learn from St. Paul's instructions to the Corinthians? Can we refrain from worshipping human beings and focus only on God? Why should anyone call themselves a Zionist as opposed to a Catholic? Is it not the same Jesus making the miracles happen? May God bless his words in our hearts 